viewers, welcome back to class. Don't forget to subscribe. Hello, viewers, you are welcome back to class. Welcome, 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 welcome to Master Builders Online Academy. I'm super, super excited because the way this class is going, I know a lot of you out there are getting lots of values. And we can see your comments. Thank you for following us. Don't forget our policy. This is what we benefit you maximally from every of the content that we release. Do not skip any part of this video and ensure you avoid every unnecessary discussions. Anytime you are set to watch and to learn new concepts from Master Builders Online platform. And also, if there be any part in this video you do not understand, guys, you have a singular opportunity to replay the video over and over and over again until you understand this. This is very, very important. But if at the end of watching it over and over and over and over again, you still have questions to ask. Guys, don't hesitate. You can quickly dive to the comment section and make your necessary questions. We will attend to your questions either in categories or in individual questions. So guys, let's get to work. On the board we have Computation of limits, and this is a continuation class. We are still looking at limits of quotient functions. And now we have problems on the board. We are asked to find the limit of the following functions. Now we have this, we have this, we have this, and that we have this. Four questions at a time. Now what do we do here? The first thing I said you should always do is to pay attention to the function you have at the denominator. When this is done, or when you understand this principle, you will never make mistakes in any limit question that you are given. Watch out for the function you have at the denominator and see what will be the behavior if you substitute the given value of x or of the function. Now, question number one, we have limit of x tends to 3 of a function x squared minus x minus 6 all over x minus 3. So the first thing I do is to put down the denominator only for objective students. For non-objective students, you need to work this out and show truly if this equation is undefined or undefined before you can progress. But for objective students, our interest is not the steps involved, but the outcome. The result is what we are interested in. If at all, we can just see it and get the answer, no problem. Because that is what we are interested about now. So in this case, all I need to do is to pull down the denominator and substitute the given limit. And the limit, which is the value of x, is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Now that the denominator turns out to be 0, this expression is undefined when we substitute this value. So what do we do to this function to make it all defined? All we need to do is to either use L hospital group or we use the factorization method since this is what a polynomial functions. Are we there? Now, for the sake of this class, we are using L hospital because it is the only method among all the methods that is not limited to any function. You can use it to solve any problem at all. Okay, so now all I need to do is to differentiate these functions individually. I have to ascertain that when I substitute the limit value, the denominator turns out to be zero. I will now differentiate using a hospital rule. And that would have given us, when we differentiate x squared, we have two x. When we differentiate one x, we have minus one, and when we differentiate minus six, we have zero. So we can practically ignore that. That's it. Then when we differentiate x, we have one. When we differentiate minus three, we have zero with respect to x. So we ignore that. And now this will have given us two x minus one. Anything divided by one is the same thing. At this point, I do not have denominator. So whatever I have. If I substitute the value of x, that is my answer. Now the denominator was 1. And when we divided this by 1, we have this. So this becomes linear. So if you substitute now and you now have 0, whatever you have there is your answer. Because at this point, the denominator was never 0, it was 1. So it was when we divided this result by 1 that we had this, which turns out to be a linear. So whatever we have in linear function, that is our outcome, that is our result. So when we substitute 3 here, this will have given us 2 multiplied by 3 minus 1. And the answer to this will have given us 5. 
2 multiplied by 3 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. That is the answer to this very question. Now we have question number 2. Limits x tends to 1. And we have x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Again, at the, this is a quotient function. And now at the denominator, we have a given function which is x squared minus 3x plus 2. All I need to do is to substitute the value of x. This will give us 1 space 1 minus 3 multiplied by 1 is 3 plus 2. Now, 1 minus, minus 3 will have given us minus 2 plus 2. And minus 2 plus 2 is 0. Now, when we substitute 1 into this given function, we are, going, we, will find that we, we are going to obtain an undefined function. So when we impute 1 into the denominator, we will obtain 0. And this happens to be undefined. Now that we have undefined expression or function, what do we do? We quickly use any of the methods. Now here we are using the L hospital rule. And what do we do? When we use L hospital rule, we differentiate these functions one after the other. When I differentiate S squared, we have 2x. When I differentiate 1x, I have 1. When I differentiate 2 with respect to s is 0. All over. When I differentiate s squared, I have 2x. When I differentiate minus 3x, I have minus 3. And when I differentiate plus 2, I have 0 with respect to x. Now, all I need to do again is to come to the denominator 2x minus 3. To know if I am to differentiate this again or not. Now, here, if I substitute the value of x here, this will give us 2 multiplied by 1 minus 3, and 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. And 2 minus 3 will have given us negative 1. And this value exists. That is to say, we will just substitute into this resource and get our answer. But if we substitute x here and the resource still turn out to be 0, we are going to use the L hospital the second time. That is it. So at this point, all I need to do is to put in the value of x, 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1 at the numerator, and at the denominator, I have 2 multiplied by 1, minus 3. Now, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, plus 1, and 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, minus 3. And this will have given us 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Our final answer is negative 3. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. That is it. Now we have question number 3. Limit x tends to 0. And we have 1 minus cos x over x squared. Similarly, all we need to do here is to focus on the denominator because we have a quotient function here. Now, what do we do here? We bring down the denominator, which is where, and the value of x is 0. So when I square 0, I have 0. That means if I substitute the value of x directly to this equation or expression, I will definitely have all defined functions. And what must I do to make this expression defined? I need to differentiate using L hospital. You see why I mentioned earlier that factorization method is limited. If there is no way you can factorize the numerator and the denominator to have a common factor in this particular question. So, the factorization method is limited, and this has proven that with this question, it has been proven that factorization method is limited. Of course, we do not actually use factorization method in this class. We can test run that in another class, but for this, we are using the hospital. Okay? So, in this case now, all I need to do, since I find out that if I substitute S at the denominator, I will have zero, I need to use the hospital rule. And in using the hospital, we are going to differentiate these functions one after the other. Now, when we differentiate 1 being a constant, we will have this as what? 0. Minus. When we differentiate cos x, we have negative sin x. And negative sin x multiplied by negative here, we are going to have plus sin x. All over. When we differentiate x squared, we have 2x. So this will have given us sin x over 2x. Again, we will still come to the denominator and work on the denominator. Now, the denominator turns out to be 2x. 
Let's substitute and see if the denominator will turn out to be a real value of zero. If it is zero, that means it's all defined. We need to use L hospital again. Now, when we substitute two here, zero here, we have two multiplied by zero is zero. That means at this point, if I impute the value of x, I'm still going to have all defined function. What must I do again? I need to use L hospital the second time. We become the second derivative. Understand? We have looked at higher derivative, and we said that second derivative is obtained from the first. Derivative. So we need to differentiate sine x. When we differentiate sine x, now we have cos x. And when we differentiate 2x, we have 2. This is it. So at this point, we find out that there is no x at the denominator again. Then we can substitute because the denominator is no longer 0. Whatever we have here now, having eliminated x from the denominator or substituted for x at the denominator and the result turns out to be a real value. Then whatever we have becomes our answer. Now at this point, I don't have to substitute for x. This will give us cos zero all over two. Now don't forget cos zero in mathematics is one. Finally, this becomes one over two. And in decimals, your answer is zero point five. This is it. So you see that in this particular question, now we use L hospital two consecutive times to ensure that we do not have zero at the denominator. So guys, if at this point you still have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please guys, subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on the post notification bell so that anytime we release mind-blowing content like this, you will be notified. Even while you're in your classroom, in your reading table, doing any of your other house choices, you will be notified. Alright, like this video, share this video, and make your message be coming. Now let's look at the very last question. We have the limit of x tends to 1, and we have x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 all over x minus 1. Now in this case, all we just need to do is to take the denominator, which is x minus 1. And what is the value of x? x is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And it is highly prohibited to have 0 at the denominator. As simple as this. To have 0 at the denominator. So now that I have 0 at the denominator, what will I do? I need to use either factorization method. Of course, factorization method can work this way. You need to be smart enough to factorize a polynomial function that has a degree 3. Where the power of x is equal to 3. Now let's use L hospital. This that's why I mentioned earlier that L hospital method has been proven to be the simplest and the what the most reliable method of solving limits of quotient functions. Now we have this to be what? When we differentiate this, we have this as 3x squared minus when we differentiate this 2 multiplied by 3 half more. We reduce the power by 1, and when we differentiate 1, we have 0 with respect to x. All over, when we differentiate x, we have 1. And when we differentiate negative 1, we have 0. So at this point now, everything here will have given us 3x squared minus 4x. The denominator, anything divided by 1 is the same number. Now, all we need to do is to substitute the value of x, whether the answer the outcome turns out to be zero. It's none of your business. In as much as you do not have a denominator here that is zero, whatever you have is your final answer. Now, in this case, all I need to do is to have this as three multiplied by one squared, four multiplied by one. So, one squared multiplied by three is three, and four multiplied by one is four. And when I remove four from three, we have negative 1. This is the answer to this very question. So guys, you see how simple it is to work or solve problems effectively on limits. This is purely for objective students. Now listen carefully. We don't have to solve thousands of problems before you get to understand some static principles. Look, 
We don't need to solve all the problems in your textbook for you to know it. We can solve one problem, only one problem, and you will solve multiple problems on your own. How will this happen? All you need to do is to understand the principles. So guys, we would love to see you in our next class. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And ensure you turn on the post notification bell for the certain videos. You can quickly check the description below where you will find the link to the next lesson. See you guys in the next class.